Welcome to Coach's Roundtable and Mid Cody. And welcome our guests from the Pittsburgh Tribune, sports writer and Pitt insider, football and basketball. No one does it better than Jerry DePaula. All right, Jerry, let's go to this Pitt basketball. Is some of the air coming out of the bubble? The Panthers 21 and 10. Horrible start, one and five, finish 11 and three. They're 12 and eight, fourth place in the ACC. They get a double bye for the tournament. So let, let me ask you, impressive wins over Duke and Virginia, but blowout losses to Duke and Wake Forest of 30 points or more. And then a horrible home loss to Missouri, 0 and 18 in the SEC. Uh, how do you weigh these two things together and where does Pitt come out on it? Well, there's a lot of excitement uh, over the, the last uh, couple of months for Pitt basketball. They won 11 out of 14 games after that one and five start you talked about. Uh, but the, you know, all the, the air will come out of the balloon and out of the bubble if they lose the Wake Forest. And I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be Wake Forest that they play on Thursday afternoon in Washington, D.C. So if they lose the Wake Forest, I don't think they're going to make it. Exactly. Even they beat Wake Forest. There's a lot of people to think they won't make it. They have to get to the championship game. Uh, which would probably be against North Carolina. Or they have to beat North Carolina to get to the championship game. Uh, and if they win two games in D.C., I think they're in. If they win one game, uh, your guess is as good as mine. I'm guessing they won't make it uh, just because you mentioned Missouri loss. How about the Syracuse home loss? Yeah, that was, that was a tough one, too. Uh, Ed, they should have played Duquesne. Duquesne would have given them a, a nice quad two victory on a neutral court, but uh, they don't want to play Duquesne, so... Uh, they would rather play North Carolina A and T with a quad four wins. So. Well, the Missouri, the Missouri loss has to hurt. Plus the oh, yeah. thirty three point loss to Wake and a thirty point loss to Duke. Even though they came back and beat Duke, I know they look at that. Lenardi, ESPN has them first four out. Yeah, if they we already had them next four out uh, a couple of days ago, yeah. and Mike DeCorsi of Fox Sports had them next four out. Uh, so when you're next four out, you know you got to pass up. Uh, depending on where you are in that four, in that list of four, you got to pass up th three or four teams. You got to hope teams like Drake, uh, you know, doesn't make, doesn't make the tournament. And the other problem is, uh, if there's upsets in conference tournaments, you know, and, and a team that's already in the tournament gets upset, the team that, that beats them in that tournament uh, takes up a spot, and then there's an, one last spot for Pitt and, and anybody else that wants to get in. So the Pitt Wake Forest game is going to be kind of a play-in game. The loser goes home or to the NIT. Uh, the winner gets to fight another day. And Jerry, let's let's look at the ACC. I've watched a lot of games. I you watch so many, you watch them all at Pitt, uh, North Carolina at the top. I think they're a very solid, good team. Uh, not not a great team. This is not a great Duke team. Uh, Virginia, I, I don't know how they won twenty two games. Their offense is uh, horrible. And great coach, there, Tony Bennett's a great coach. That's how yeah, they won. Pitt, Pitt yeah. right there at number four. I think. I think Pitt can measure up with any of them. Maybe they come up a little bit short with North Carolina. And to me, you correct me if I'm wrong, this is kind of a down year for the ACC. <laughs> That's what everybody says. Uh, you, you know, there's only two teams ranked uh, in the AP Top 25, and that's uh, North Carolina and Duke. Uh, and, and Wake Forest had its moments this year. Clemson had its moments this year. Virginia, even though they uh, they ended the season with a nice win against Georgia Tech, uh, really had, had been struggling offensively uh, for, for about two or three weeks uh, heading into the last game of the season. So, uh, you know, if, if you think Virginia is the number four team, the fourth best team in the conference, even though Pitt is a, a number four seed, uh, or a number three seed, Virginia is probably the third after North Carolina and Duke. Then you got Clemson, Wake Forest, and Pitt all bunched together. Uh, and those are, they're good teams, not great teams. Uh, like you said, North Carolina probably isn't a great team. Although, if North Carolina runs the table and, and wins the ACC tournament championship, they have a shot to be a number one seed, I think. Now, Duke probably won't. Uh, they'll probably get, get beat at some point along the way in the tournament, and they'll be a two or a three. Uh, but after that, you know, you got teams like you know, back at the bottom of the, the bottom of the barrel in the ACC is really bad. You know, Pitt, Harvard, Boston College, Louisville is, is on, probably going to fire its coach. And Notre Dame, you know, has a couple of good players, but everybody else is. And then they, they, beat the Clemson, they beat Clemson and Wake Forest in one week to give Pitt a little bit of a boost. They did. They, they did win some games, you know, uh, but they're at the bottom of the barrel, too. And they're, they're probably added nowhere after the season ends. So, no. uh, you know, even the NIT is probably going to take only two or three um a ACC teams. It is, you know, Jeff Cape will argue with me and say this is not a down year. It's still a great conference. It's still a very good conference, 
I would uh, call it a great conference. No, I wouldn't call it great either. I I, I think that, uh, like I said, you know, a team like Virginia, who you think might be the third best team in the conference, really struggled, you know, late in the season. And even even Tibet, the number four seed with a double bye, you know, they lost to Missouri. You know, that was a long time ago, but Missouri was 0-18 in the SEC. That yeah. loss really has to hurt. And that's that's the loss. And plus the Syracuse loss at home, it's going to keep Pitt out of the tournament, I think. Well, let's look after this one and five start. And, and it seems to me you're there all the time. Uh, Blake Ensign got hot. So goes Blake. So goes the Panthers. And then uh, the improved play uh, of the center play, Federico and uh, Diaz uh, Graham. And then did anyone see it coming with these freshman guards of Carrington and Lowe and uh, how savvy their play developed through the years to help spur this win streak? You got to give Jeff Capel credit for getting those guys in, on campus. You know, Carrington it could be a one and done guy. You know, there's a really good chance that I think the NBA is going to come calling and, uh, you know, Pitt's uh, NIL collective, the Alliance 412, is going to have to step up to try to keep him uh, at Pitt for another year. You're, uh, you're reading my but, mind. That was my next question. Right. How are they going to afford to keep those two guys? Not I, Henson makes almost a half a million. Those freshman guards only get 75000 That's going to have to be a huge bump to keep them at, oh, yeah. I'm going to yeah. say, at least uh, 250000 for each. Well, that's why Alliance 412 is always on Twitter a asking for memberships and, and people to, you know, do donate. You know, you got yeah, to those, those really, <laughs> get those really well-heeled donors, you know, to step up and, and help out <laughs> and keep those two guys on campus, uh, especially Carrington, who's going to have a chance uh, to make money in the NBA. Uh, but they, 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 for, for freshmen, they've really played really well. Lowe, you know, didn't start until I think it was the Louisville game, you know, early in January. Uh, but since then, you know, he's been, you know, the way he, he brings the ball up court, it's almost like it's tethered to his hand, you know, and, and, and he's really good at, at passing the ball and finding the open man and penetrating, getting into the paint with that little fall away uh, jump shot that, that he has. Uh, you know, they, they, you know, I give capable credit for bringing those guys on campus because they're two of the best recruits, probably the two best recruits he's had uh, as far as coming, coming out of high school uh, and, and, and finding Blake Henson. You know, he told told the story the other day about how Henson's name came across his desk when he first took the job at Pitt in 2018, and he kind of ignored it. Uh, and then four years later, when he was thinking about transferring, uh, he, he kind of ignored him again. And by the end of that that 2022 season, uh, Henson was still available, luckily, and then they got him. So the third time was a charm, and uh, boy, they'd be lost without him. And it'll be interesting to see who takes up the scoring slack and a three-point shooting slack. Uh, next year, with Henson gone, and maybe one of those two or both of those freshman guards guards gone. Hey Jerry, in the final uh, couple minutes here, let's let's switch yeah. over to spring football. Hope spring's eternal. It's, everyone's uh, excited about spring football. There's a lot of excitement at Pitt with the new offensive coordinator, Cade Bell. But I, I remember last spring, I went to the spring game. There was tons of excitement about Phil Jacoby coming in. And you saw what happened last year, one of the worst seasons at Pitt in years, three and nine, just a horrible offense. Um, what do you see here with Cade Bell? Are you as optimistic as all the talk? Well, it's hard for me to say. You know, Cade Bell is a smart guy. I talked to him, I think, twice so far uh, during spring football. Uh, and I spoke to his dad when he first got hired, Kerwin Bell, uh, the former quarterback. He, was, he backed up Dan Marino and yeah. Jim Harbaugh in the NFL, actually. And he, he talked about, you know, how – uh, there's nobody he trusted with his offense. And, and, and Cor Corwin Bell has been a head coach for a long time. No one he trusted with his offense other than his son. Uh, and his son was running that offense when he was very young. He's already 31 now. Uh, he, he was offensive coordinator in his mid-20s. Uh, so the guy has a brain on him. And and and, and uh, he had some playmakers at Western Carolina. Uh, and, he, and he brought a couple of them to, with him to Pitt. You know, Sincere Lee and Desmond Reed. Uh, they're not big guys, Ed. Uh, they're little guys who, who who can swivel their hips, as they say, and and, and can get open. And, and, and Bell apparently has a knack uh, for finding holes in a defense and, and getting guys open. Now, he did real well at Western Carolina in the FCS. What's he going to do against Clemson when Clemson uh, when Pitt plays Clemson this coming season? What's he going to do, you know, uh, you know, when the, the going really gets tough and he has to beat some you know quality ACC teams uh, next season? Uh, you know, he, he has to prove it, uh, but he's on the right, on the right track. And I give Pat Narduzzi a lot of credit. You know, Pat's almost 60 years old himself and he ended up getting rid of a lot of his uh, older assistants to bring in younger guys. And, uh, you know, he, he sort of, uh, 
uh, changed the way he, he did things. He changed his his method. You you used to be he was always a coach that wanted to run the ball, play strong defense, and, and not take any chances. Now he's going to get, do that speed, speed, speed uh, offense that uh, Todd Graham tried to popularize uh, 13 years ago. All of a sudden, it's in vogue yeah, again. I, and everybody I, I, had, I had Todd Todd on the show and all his talk. He had everyone excited to pre press the pedal to the metal, and we saw how that. Uh, yeah, we're, we're going to get we're going to get the we're going to get in the left lane and put the hammer down. Is what he used yeah, to the say. Second coming of Paul Hackett. Hey, now the thing is, you, you know, us, appreciate all your insight and. Uh, Let's see if we can get pit into the NCAA tournament. No, we can't do anything about it. But we're just watching. Look, we're watching. Wait, right? All right, Jerry. Thanks a lot. I always appreciate you coming on. Okay. Have a Thanks, good day. Jerry. Bye. I'll be right back with Alan George. EXP Stream is the best way to get all your TV in one place. Miss the beginning of a program or forgot to record? Look for the start over icon and restart it up to 72 hours later. EXP Stream from Armstrong. Streaming solved. I'm back, joined to my right by the Swami George Avram, to my left, the Tiger Albert Campman. Let's go to Spotlight High School Wrestling Boys. Vaughn Spencer of Prime Richland, gold medal, 172 pounds. Uh, Spencer finishes career with two WPIL gold medals, two section gold medals, his state gold medal. And this, he missed his freshman year and last year had to drop out of the state uh, tournament because he tore his knee up. Uh, Santino Sloboda of Butler, 114 pounds. He finished sixth, 38 and three on a season. And Norwin's Landon Sidon, he won the 114 pound title. Sloboda defeated Sidon in the WPL title match. Great year for Santino, still has two years to go. Proof of how great the wrestling is in Pennsylvania. Yes. I mean, here's a kid who's fantastic in phase of six. I mean, geez. Absolutely. Oh, my yeah. gosh. And uh, Connor Smith of Seneca <laughs> Valley, eighth at 121 uh, pounds. And in girls wrestling, Anna Malovich, she suffered her first loss of the year, a 118 pound class. Uh, she f finishes with a silver medal, losing a 13 to 7 decision in the title match. Same uh, story. Great, great season for her. And you get to the end, there is always someone outstanding <laughs> waiting for you. Uh, <laughs> Miranda. Lejevic, I hope I have her name right, a knock, 100-pound uh, class. She placed third. And Lena Rumpler of North Allegheny, she lost a tough championship match. She finishes with a silver medal in the 155-pound class category. PIAA basketball playoffs, boys 1A, Imani Christian 88, Union Reimersburg 65, Dawson Camper and Hayden Smith, each with 19 points. And in uh, 2A, Fort Cherry 61, Corn City 52. Corn City finishes a great year, 20 and 8. Shane Peters had 14 points and 12 rebounds for the Gremlins. And in 3A, Mohawk 56, Monotol 42. Chase and Rugg 13 points. The Warriors finish 13 and 12. Elwood City 52, Westmont Hilltop 44, Joseph Roth 30 points. That gives him 2,079 for his career. It's 29th all-time WBIL. Uh, next up for the Wolverines 18 and 9. They take on Mohawk 18 and 8. It's their first playoff state playoff win in 26 years. Do you know who the coach was 26 years ago? Some ball guy. I used to see him yeah. acting up down there. It was but some, I... some nut maniac. Oh, that's crazy they guy. Me. They said, is that your buddy? I said, no. <laughs> no. Oh, Mel, he said to me, he wants to see your buddy. I said, not a buddy of mine. I go, that coach is right here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's right here. That's I was so Albert funny. 26 years ago. How about Joseph Roth? Oh. No, he's been, yeah. Tell him about, he doesn't know the story. Joseph Tell Roth, him. right now. The story, the story I'm getting. It, yeah. It, it's based on fact. That if Elwood wins this, the swimming and the Elwood go, goes at the same exact time, and he has to go to swimming. Yes. Wow. How about how, how sad that is? That is. Yeah. That, that, they can't do anything about that. No. Or, that that's, that's sad. There's something wrong there. They can't make an adjustment in that situation. In 4A, North Catholic 67, Warren 58, Max Hurry 21. Next up for the Trojans, 17 and 9. They got a tough one with Avonworth, 18 and 9. And yeah, well, we're saying that. I'm yeah, we're saying, we're yeah. saying, we got a tough yeah, one. Yeah. Hey, you know well, it's a great, it's a great hey, matchup. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it helps them because you've got Lincoln and Uniontown squaring off. 
One yes. of them's out. Yeah, one of the two best teams is going yeah. out. Yes. Tonight. And in girls <laughs> basketball, uh, North Allegheny 57, Erie 23, Caroline Henderson 19 points. She is a Rochester Institute of Technology recruit. Next up for NA 23 and 3, they take on North Penn. 23 and 4, that's a name you hear <coughs> all the time. Yeah, North Penn. Yeah. They're no strangers to one another. No, no. And, you know, that's the eastern <coughs> side of the, you know. Quickly get to the eastern side of the bracket, 6A, yeah. huh? Yeah. And in 4A, North Catholic 47, Conneaut 29, Brady Wayner 13, Elena Rocco 12. Next up for the Trojanettes 18 and 7. They take on Warren 21 and 5. Now, getting ready for the playoffs, NA and, and uh, North Catholic scrimmage. One another. That tells you how good North Catholic is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. good good for both teams, right? Yeah, you don't want to scrimmage somebody that you're going to blow off the court. <laughs> no. I mean, you don't get any help. But really, think about this. The fact that you can only scrimmage if you're still playing, there shouldn't be anybody left that you blow off the court. Right. <clears throat> and uh, 3A, Seton LaSalle 66, Carn City 46, Brooklyn Taylor 12, Savannah Prescott 12, KC finishes 18 and 9, and they finish with another District 9 3A championship. And uh, on a basket in 2A, with just three seconds left remaining, West Middlesex, Nip Monotol, 38 to 36. Catherine Kelly had 12 points. She finishes her career as a Lady Warriors all time leading scorer with 1,452 points. That's a great Quite career. A career, isn't yeah. it? Yes. Monotol finishes 18 and 7. High School Hockey Penguins Cup in a second round game. Seneca Valley 4, Mount Lebanon nothing. Goalie Chenzo Tullio with a shutout. And next in the semifinals, NA defeated Seneca Valley 3 to 2. In the other semifinal, Pine Richland defeated Peters Township. So Pine Richland and NA will fight it out for the Penguins Cup Championship. High School Track Butler Cross Country and Track star Drew Griffith. He broke the national prep indoor two-mile record with a time of 8 minutes, 34.91 seconds. This was at Boston's New Balance National Event. The previous record was set in 2013. What's left for him to do? Is there anything left? I sit in the show. I'll use that as my mouth's closed. That one, uh, do you hear yeah. that time? Eight, four, yeah. Yes. That's an 11-year-old no, no, no. record. No, it's unbelievable talent. It is. <laughs> no, I can't believe Ronnie because somebody can run that fast. He's For, an unbelievable oh talent. No question. <laughs> uh, our stories of the week. Get your Super Bowl tickets. The Steelers signed free agent quarterback Russell Wilson to a one-year deal. It's a, it's a. Easy deal for the Steelers. A great bargain. One point two million yeah. veteran minimum. Uh, minimum. Uh, the Broncos hit with an eighty-five million dollar cap. That that deal was five years for Wilson at two hundred and forty-two million. Plus, they gave away what three draft picks and two yeah, players. Two for years it. worth of players for nothing. Terrible. He was eleven and nineteen as a starter for Denver. This past season, he threw 26 touchdown passes, eight interceptions. Kenny Pickett can't be happy, but Pickett in 12 games for the Steelers, six touchdown passes, four interceptions. I heard one sports show say, uh, Wilson going to the Steelers is Pickett's backup. Stop the nonsense. He's not coming as any backup. And if Tomlin says there's a competition, that's a lot of BS. I was asking that, though. I yeah. was asking that because I, more they give up on Pickett early. Boy, he, wouldn't come. He, he wouldn't have come. He wouldn't have come. Absolutely. Uh, so now Wilson, 36. He's going to be the starter. Uh, Pickett's going to be the backup. Goodbye, Mason Rudolph, who I think is better than Pickett, but he's not sticking around. I want to ask you. Wilson beat Kansas City last year. Yes. It, it, he didn't have great numbers, but 26 and 8 is a whole lot better Very than good. 6 and 4. Very Much better. It's a big upgrade at the position. Now, does it make him a Super Bowl contender, a contender no. for the AFC Championship? That's the talk you're, you're hearing. I, do you think this was a Tomlin move or more of an Art Rooney move? I don't know who the move was, but the, the, anytime you can upgrade a team, does it happen? Yeah, absolutely. It, it, absolutely. <clears throat> now, I'm going to ask you guys this Question. I don't know what the answer is. Twice now, Super Bowl coaches parted with Russell Wilson. First Pete Carroll with Seattle and now Sean Payton with Denver. Is there something we're not seeing? That well, it's not near the party it was. Right, I right. watched with naked eyes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I just, that's, that's really simple. It's the it's, man. It's yeah. the person. They, they bring him in. Now to Denver. Now wait a minute. His own <laughs> office. He doesn't dress with anybody else. He doesn't, he doesn't eat, doesn't do anything with anybody else. That's your own fault. 
Right. What were you doing? Right. Now, now is, is the underlying issue maybe he's not the team leader that you expect him to be? Could that be one of the issues? I don't the, know. The players don't say that. No. They don't like him. They, 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 that's why Carroll was passing the ball in the half-yard line. He should have run that ball. Those defensive guys hated him from day one. They always. I didn't have. realize that, George. Yeah. Okay. He's, I didn't. He's, I didn't. He's I, Steve I, I heard Garvey. Some yeah. Albert. He's Steve Garvey. I see a lot. Right. Of, a I lot hear a little, little, little bit of that talk. Yeah. So uh, that question. That's important. Whether the quarterback has a locker well, room. Only time it's important it's is when you win. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh yeah. When they when won, he was no, fine. No, you understand? It's losing. But, but, losing games. That's what happens. But listen, this goes back to the Super Bowl passing that ball on the six-inch line. He wanted Russell Wilson to throw the touchdown pass. That should have been a handoff, whether those guys liked him or not. And once you lose that, that, well, that he confidence, he it's, they, it's they, gone. They, they didn't like it. Hey, National Hockey. And his wife's a celebrity, don't forget. Okay. A big-time celebrity. Oh. Then she'll own Pittsburgh. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> celebrity in town. Yeah. Hey, National Hockey League Rizzo. loses a 6-7 to seven, the Pens, 7th place. Uh, in the Metro, they're now 28, 27, and 8. Six points out of fourth, which is a huge drop-off. 19 games left. How about these losses? Six to nothing, five to one, four to nothing. What's that tell you? I, I they they, they, went, they tanked hockey. in. Bad hockey. I see this they, bad they, hockey. They lost their interest. No, they're not playing. No. They're just not playing. And then on top of this, it's a trade I don't like at all. Uh, Kyle Dubas sends a uh, star forward. Jake Gensel to the Carolina Hurricanes for forward Michael Bunting. He's a best average player. They got three prospects, a couple of conditional. Mm -hmm. When you hear conditional draft picks, you don't get excited about them. But their three prospects that they're getting are not highly rated within their system. Well, here's the problem, though. If you look, they're going to give up for nothing. At least you got something. I mean, he was gone. Yeah, they, 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 he was gone. You know, so you, you try, you try yeah. to give it best you can. Yeah, that's right, Albert. It's like the Pirates. They always say, they gave Cole away from. Well, he's leaving. Yes. Well, and, and also uh, defenseman uh, Chad uh, Ruedel, he's, he's gone. Ty Smith and uh, reserve goalie Magnus Helberg. But I, I, don't, I don't see this materializing down the road. Oh, this is going to rebuild the Pens. I don't, I don't I hope I'm wrong, but no, I don't but that, see it that's that way. What, that, was, that wasn't what the trade was made. They had to make they a trade. They because they, they, yeah, they, they couldn't sign, could sign him. Yeah, that's all. Uh, but you would hope they'd have gotten something back in and the other people know that. The other teams know that. Hey, real quick, in hockey, yeah. something happened. I didn't know the rule. Team pulled their goalie in overtime. If you pull your goalie in overtime, you don't get the point for the tie. Wow. Okay. I didn't know, I didn't that. know that either. No. All right, college basketball pit. Um, Closes out the regular season with an 81-73 win over North Carolina State. They get a double bye in the ACC tournament. Bob uh, Carrington with 23, Blake Kinson 21. Pitt 21 and 10, 12 and 8. They started the ACC 1 and 5. They finished 11 and 3 uh, to go 12 and 8. Uh, they back to back 20 win seasons. They're in fourth place in the ACC. But it, it, when we talk about the NCAA bubble. Uh, those blowout losses to both Duke and Wake Forest hurt them, plus a loss to Missouri. Missouri 0-18 in the SEC this this year. That didn't, doesn't help them at all. I think they have to win two to maybe even get that nudge into the NCAA in, in the ACC tournament. Yeah, that's what they're saying. I, I wonder had they been better to be fifth and have an easy win. Now, you, you, you know, might be possible. Five. They're, they're probably yeah. going to play Wake Forest. Play Wake looks, yeah, they got to play twice, Wake, right? They can't yeah. beat them, right? They, and they, they have they have trouble with them in matchups. And then matchups. here is the other thing. Okay, Henson, with names, image, and likeness, and he lines four twelve. He makes about four hundred fifty thousand right. this year. He's gone. How are you going to keep those two outstanding freshman guards, Low and Carrington, who made seventy five thousand each? Each is going to want at least a quarter of a million. I do not think it's going. The old man's telling him go pro. He's Al uh, thinks he's first round. He's a first rounder. Well, he's do going. you think he is? He's yes. going for first sure. Rounder. Well, either way, if he stays, Pitt's going to have to pony up. They will. That's They're going to have to pony up for luck. Yeah, I know. They're going to go, but they, he'll have three new players, and we don't even know who they are right now. I mean, they, yeah. the portal. How many yesterday? I think sixty-seven. The first day. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I sent you a little yeah. note. Yeah, sixty-seven. I, I, they'll have new players. Yeah, the, the, yeah. the, you know, the money keeps coming up. <laughs> if you want to be a donor, what you guys could do for the pit for <laughs> yeah. it's a minimum of 20000 a year, and then you go in and have a hot dog with one of the coaches. Right. Yeah, it's such a nice thing. Yeah. To, I told you, my buddy, Penn State, they, he said, I'll send you 50 The next day, the lady called. She said, are you using PayPal or whatever? 
He said, what do you mean? She said, well, that's a generous donation. She thought he was giving him 50000 oh. Hey, nice to see Duquesne winning yeah, again, 67-45, to 45, or 65 over George Washington on Jimmy Clark III's two free throws. He hits 1,000 for his career points. He finished with 22 in the game. The Dukes, 20-11, and 10-8, next to the Atlantic 10 tournament. Pretty good when you started off the Atlantic 10-0-5. Yeah. Dangerous team in the tournament. Very. I'm talking about the, that, their tournament. Uh, Slippery Rock University finishes 16 and 14. Uh, second round PSAC loss at, at Cal, 91 57. Maceo Austin with 15 points. Austin and Jomo Goings, first team PSAC West. Uh, the Rock, 16 and 14 finish, 13 and 1 at home, 3 and 13 on the way. If coach can figure out next year to play 500 on a the road, they have 20 win seasons. I have to study the film big time and figure out wh why, how this happens. We, we, you know what the puzzler is. You know what I'm going to say. No <coughs> crowd. It's not the crowd. You know. You know what the crowd was for the for the playoff game at Cal, three hundred ninety seven. Did you hear that number? At Cal, second round playoff game. That's all it showed up for the game. So they lost by thirty four so points. They're not worried about any. <laughs> fans. No, it's not the crowd. Not the crowd. Yes, there, there's something that they just don't play Gannon well gets them. <laughs> on on the road. If Gannon you, fills it if, up. If you, who else? <laughs> Indiana. What yeah. do they have there in that too. arena? They have towns mm -hmm. and adult fans. Well, Slippery if, Rock if, has neither. If the Rock is just eight and eight in a row. Absolutely. Look, look at the difference in their <laughs> Absolutely. season. Absolutely. All right. Now, how about this, guys? The Dartmouth men's basketball players, they vote to unionize. Uh, I don't know what that means with names, image, and likeness, I don't how know. this helps them at all. I'm not sure. You, the pit players don't have to unionize with the – Force just give us the cash. Lines. Just, just, <laughs> just give them the money. Yes. And, and speaking of money, college football, uh, West Virginia football coach Neil Brown, he signs a contract extension, but with a $400,000 pay cut over three years before you start feeling sorry for him, he'll make $4 million next this season and the following season. He'll make $4.3 million in 2026 and $4.4 million in 2027. I don't get the four hundred thousand dollar pay cut. Do you? Well, he was halfway out the door before yeah. last year, and then the bowl, the pit game helped him, and then and he came on this show, so I root for him. Yeah, <laughs> I would say that too. <laughs> hey, uh, let's mention high school uh, football WPL realignment. Six A has seven teams. Butler is not going to be the eighth team. They're going independent. Five A has twenty teams. Hello, Aliquippa. This is their their next move. Of course, is to the Big Ten. And in 4A, there are 17 teams, but I like this. Knock, Mars, and Hampton reunited. 3A, 20 teams. North Catholic moves down from 4A. 2A has 22, and 1A has 30. Crazy, huh? Yeah, because out, out in the East, you have just the opposite. You have 36A right. teams. Just the opposite, And, and yes. fewer 1A teams. Exactly. Yeah, it's uh, everybody's wondering how El Club was going to do. I'm going to say they do pretty good. Can I say that <laughs> yeah. too right now? Yeah. I'll they won back-to-back you know, back four. I'm, in, I'm interested to see them play Pine Rich and Penn I think they do pretty good. <laughs> That's it for us. We're out of time. We'll see you next week. Stream is the best way to get all your TV in one place. Miss the beginning of a program or forgot to record? Look for the start over icon and restart it up to 72 hours later. EXP Stream from Armstrong. Streaming solved.